Hello, I'm Pira Nada, and welcome to Rappler Talk. Right now, we're with Moro Islamic Liberation Front Chairman Al Haj Murad Ibrahim, um, and we're in Cotabato City, where uh, we're, we, there, there's been a count of the results back in the city, and we have seen some partial but and unofficial results. As of the moment, the yes votes have overtaken the no votes, um, but of course, we will still have to wait a few hours, maybe by tomorrow, for the final tally. Thank you so much, Chairman Thank you. Murad, yeah. for allowing us to interview you, especially on this day. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, I believe that um, the votes in the city canvassing, mm -hmm. in the Board of uh, mm -hmm. Plebiscit Inspectors, they were saying that um, right now, the overtake na po yung yes votes mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. versus the no. And it's, I think, um, just to give you an idea, the latest update, sir, is 22,000... Um, 598 for yes and 19,246 for no mm -hmm. as of this moment. So, sir, mm -hmm. what are your reactions to that? The fact that yes has overtaken Kota, the no in Cotabato City. We are expecting that uh, because, uh, uh, you see, a majority of the residents of the city are... Uh, 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 are among them are uh, uh, mem uh, members of the MILF. If not members, are sympathetic to the MILF. So we are expecting that. Kaya nga, our our appeal na lang is uh, just let the people vote freely without any any intervention, without any intimidation, uh, without uh, any uh, uh, cheating. So. Pag uh, nangyari, yun ang nangyari, actually, alam na namin na we are confident na mananalo ang yes sa uh, Cotabato City. Mm, pero sir, may mga statements from some MI officials, like si Chairman Iqbal, Iqbal na they were encountering problems uh -huh. uh, up to the last minute. Because we know that very tense situations sa Cotabato City, we have a mayor who is uh -huh. openly against uh -huh. uh, yeah. norm inclusion. So sir, uh, what did MILF do to try to ensure victory in Cotabato City? Actually, at first, uh, our option is uh, we will uh, we, we deploy the uh, unarmed uh, MILF uh, people in the area just to watch and uh, to protect the uh, make sure that our people will be allowed to vote uh, and then uh, protect yung voto nila. But there was a complaint from the, from the, the I think, from the city government. Ang ganon nakita nila yung mga deploy namin na mga kwan, unarmed kwan. So uh, we were, our attention was called up by Secretary uh, Galvez. Uh, so sabi namin, as long as uh, it is assured, na there will be no no manipulation, no uh, intimidation of them. Then we are willing to uh, uh, pull out our uh, our men in the area. But sir, in terms of the days before, even the months before the plebiscite, of course you had to kind of uh, promote the BUL and you had to mobilize people. Uh, was there a messaging strategy to specific groups um, just to ensure that they would vote for inclusion into the barn in Cotabato City? Well, through the social media, it there uh, are um, mga group that uh, initiate, uh, and then on us, on our side also, there were several rallies uh, conducted within Cotabato City, and because uh, ang yun, yun lang talaga ang kwan, uh, fear namin is pag na manipulate yung boto, because mayroon kami nakikita na uh, mayroong mga officials, barangay officials especially, trying to, uh, trying to uh, intervene. Uh, so, yun ang, yun ang, uh, so, uh, as far as uh, yung uh, mga mismong mga tao, we'll have no doubt na sila uh, bubuto ng yes. Uh, sir, the voting history of Cotabato City has it voting twice against being included in an autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. Mm -hmm. And the third time, this time, mm -hmm. it seems that the yes has overtaken the no. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think sparked this change? Uh, unang una, uh, kung ikaw compare mo, if you compare the ARMM with the 
uh, the, the law that created the air, remember, and the law that is creating the barn, malayo ang diferensya. It is much better, more powers were given to the uh, autonomous government. Uh, um, there is uh, fiscal autonomy. Uh, so, nakikita natin na very bright yung future ng kwan. Now, so that is one factor, kaya maraming na-attract dito. Uh, uh, so far, talagang wala kami nakikita na real na opposition. Because uh, we have been telling yung nagsasabi ng no, ano ba ang ayaw nila sa BOL? Wala naman silang masabi na ayaw nila. Because all the provisions are really very, so very beneficial to the people. So, uh, so yun ang isang kwan, very attractive sa mga tao. Secondly, uh, at the time of the uh, first and second plebiscite, the MILF uh, boycotted the plebiscite. plebiscite. Hindi kami Somali. And uh, we even encourage people not to join the plebiscite because it is not acceptable to us. So, hindi namin kwan. Mm. And yesterday, sir, you said that uh, the hardest struggle is against ourselves. Um, so now, of course, we don't yet know the official final result of the uh -huh. entire plebiscite. Uh -huh. So uh, that might take a few days. But pero ngayon po, um, we're seeing some positivity, some optimism among uh -huh. the pro BOL uh -huh. crowd. Uh, and now, just looking forward, if uh -huh. the BOL is ratified, how have you prepared for the role of chief minister, if also you are appointed? Well, for me, uh, because uh, I already predicted that once we have the government, then uh, in the transition period, uh, I will be heading the government. So, I have exhausted all uh, means to prepare myself and also to prepare our people. Actually, uh, as early as three years uh, before, we have been sending uh, our young people to other countries for the for capacity building on governance we have sent some in japan we have sent some in turkey we have sent some in malaysia so we we have uh, people who are already uh, ready in the because what is important for us is the bureaucracy uh, very important the bureaucracy must be a capable bureaucracy. Otherwise, we, it is uh, difficult to run the government. Now, uh, what I was saying that uh, uh, the, 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 this period is uh, the difficult struggle, the more difficult struggle, and it is a struggle against ourselves. Uh, basically, because uh, we see that uh, unless we are able to change, to, to uh, eradicate all the ills of the government, governance, uh, yung uh, corruption, uh, yung mga uh, nepotism, yung mga lahat ng ito, then uh, we will just be like uh, change of leadership. If we just adopt the same system uh, in the governance. So the, the, our success for change is we have to uh, really change ourselves. And that is the reason why uh, several times itong ARMM was offered to us. Pero sabi namin, no, unless we, there is a new law that will, uh, that will really change the system, hindi kami papasok sa gobyerno. Um, given this, what do you think are the three opportunities for Mindanao with the creation of BARM? Hmm. Well, uh, one thing is uh, if you look at the BARM, uh, it has achieved uh, uh, the, 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 the power sharing is much uh, more uh, than the ARMM. There are more powers granted to the uh, BARM. And uh, this is basically granted. It is not. Uh, it is not only devolved. It is already granted as exclusive power to the Bangsa Moro. Then, uh, so <coughs> it has more. Uh, the, the 
the aspiration of the people for uh, self-determination is more embodied in there. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, we, have the fis uh, we have achieved fiscal autonomy, meaning there is already fixed uh, appropriation coming from the national government for the Bank Samoro. Unlike the ARMM, wherein they have to submit their budget to a Congress, and Congress will will uh, will uh, allocate will uh, uh, the, the approve the budget. This one, uh, there is already the uh, allocated uh, black grant, uh, which is uh, five percent of uh, the uh, total collection uh, of internal revenue collection and uh, custom fees in the entire country. So it would be much more than uh, the arm have practically the highest budget he, the arm obtained is only 32 billion. But this black grant is uh, about 70 billion. Mm. So it's much, much uh, bigger. Secondly, there is a development uh, fund also allocated uh, 50 billion uh, spread for 10 years meaning 5 billion every year. This uh, black, uh, this uh, special development fund is allocated in order that uh, the barn can catch up with other, other region. Because now the situation of the ARMM region is we are at the lowest in development. So we need to catch up. So that is uh, one. So, so it's, uh, it enjoys uh, much, uh, uh, much, uh, uh, stronger autonomy, uh, it has uh, more power, it has uh, more uh, resources, uh, to, uh, so there is also the sharing system in the collection of uh, taxes and also the natural resources. So there is a very good chance for the uh, barn to uh, develop the area and uh, uh, be able to, with, with, uh, with this uh, power and uh, resources allocated, uh, there is a better chance to uh, develop the area. And also, uh, another factor also is the peace and order situation. Because now, <coughs> uh, you will see that these small groups uh, is capitalizing on the failure of the peace process mm -hmm. in trying to woo people to support them. Uh, they have always been telling people that you have no, there is no uh, chance in the peace process because if you look at the situation, these uh, small groups emerged when, the, when there was a failure in the process, peace process. The Abu Sayyaf uh, emerged after the failure of the implementation of the 1996 ag agreement of the MNLF. So they bolted out of the MNLF. Then the BIFF bolted out to the MILF when the MOA AD was not signed. So the Moti group uh, also uh, bolted from the MILF after the failure of the BBL to pass in the past administration. So you will see that all these small groups uh, are basically frustrated in the peace process. So once there is success, then uh, they will see that uh, something really is uh, beneficial. Sir, but in the case of <coughs> Ute and BIFF, there's a foreign influence now. The ISIS is trying to uh, also gain their loyalty, their allegiance. Mm. So how do we deal with this foreign influence, the ISIS trying to come in here? Well, uh, that is a reality that uh, they are trying to, uh, although they are not still, they are not still part of the ISIS, but they are trying to connect to the ISIS just for resources, for funding reason, because they see that it's an opportunity for them to receive funds from this uh, uh, global uh, terrorist group. So now, <coughs> if you see the status also of the ISIS, globally they are now going down because they they they, they cannot uh, uh, 
uh, now their, their, their capacity, capability is uh, much reduced than before. So uh, we see that uh, it is not a matter of ideological on the side of this small group, but it is more a survival for them. So they can get uh, uh, some funding. Um, uh, they, they are getting funding locally, but uh, very small. So, so you're not that worried about the ISIS? Now we see that uh, we can easily counter the ISIS. First, uh, you know, uh, even this government uh, are surrounding us is uh, will be very cooperative in uh, addressing this. Uh, ISIS because the ISIS can come in because of our very porous uh, border Indonesia and Malaysia so if we have a good cooperation with Indonesia and Malaysia then we can prevent the ISIS to come in so sir does the bar <coughs> tend to uh, create alliances agreements with Malaysia Indonesia actually it's just a matter of uh, following up because there is already an existing agreement with the uh, with the government even with president Duterte when he visited Kuala Lumpur visited Indonesia they already have that uh, co cooperation agreement and sir, oh. now we move on to the BPA <coughs> and the people who will be part of it uh, how far have you gone to selecting nominees of the MILF for the for the AP seats of the BPA or the 41 seats for MILF in the BPA we have completed the 41 uh, nominees already and submitted to the office of the president. And uh, we make sure that uh, geographically, there is a geographic representation and the sectoral representation also. Uh, we, we, we take care that uh, uh, all, the, all the sectors are represented. And then, uh, uh, although uh, more of them is uh, also coming from the leadership of the uh, MILF, uh, being uh, the leading uh, organ in the in the in the, uh, in the in the coming BTA. Mm. Uh, but sir, uh, if you is it possible for you to give names or even the maybe a, a peek at the composition, like how many women, how many Christians? Uh, well, uh, I really cannot uh, recall exactly, but I remember uh, at least uh, three women, I think, and one, uh, one, one or two IPs, and also we have a representation from the uh, Christian sector. Mm -hmm. uh. So how, how have you already considered who will be your deputy minister? Well, uh, we have to, Kwan, we have to... Uh, this will be uh, decided by the uh, parliament what is this when once it is only already in place uh, because the actually uh, even the chief minister uh, although it's appointed by the president but it has to be confirmed also by the parliament because that is the that is the law uh, uh, no, no. During the BTA period already. Once the BTA is formed, that's then the uh, that's the parliament already. So it will confirm the chief minister, it will confirm the deputy chief ministers. Mm. Uh, so, sir, going now to <coughs> challenges other than, you know, the bureaucracy, running government, uh, we know that there are existing powerful political families in ARM, um, mm. and even here in Cotabata City. And uh, so, the issue now here is these families have also been accused of corruption, impunity, for example, yeah. the Ambatuans, they, they, mm. they're being charged with the Ambatuan massacre, so mm. they also have, some of them have private armies. Um, mm. and this has created problems for Mindanao. So mm. how does MILF, when it becomes to the governing entity or the mm. leader of the government here, how will, they, how will you deal with these problems, mm. with these families? Well, these are very challenging problems and, uh, you know, in the peace process, we have two tracks. One track is the political track, which is now the ratification of the uh, BOL and then the formation of the BTA. The other track is the normalization track, and uh, this includes the decommissioning of our forces and then uh, the disarmament of uh, private armies and then the, the formation of a joint security teams uh, in the in the at the interim, when the security uh, structure is not yet uh, 
fully in place. So we will have an, a joint uh, security, we call it GPST, Joint Peace and Security Teams. This will be composed of MILF uh, 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 combatants, uh, then uh, uh, PNP and AFP. So this will take care of the security of the region for the meantime that uh, we are not able to strengthen the regional police. There is already an existing regional police, but we need to strengthen in order to cope up with the security situation. So uh, before it is uh, strengthened, then we will have the GPST as the security measures. So we see that uh, the the issue, the big issue here, is how to control the firearms, the weapons, because. Uh, uh, frankly, this is uh, the, the the this is the main uh, problem in the area because uh, so many lost firearms. Everybody have their own weapons, mm, so that is the main challenge. And this will be uh, this will be on our side. We have volunteered to decommission our forces, and then uh, then the government uh, the the. The private armies has to be dismantled. It is agreed by the, with the government, so we we'll jointly undertake that. In fact, the president has already started uh, uh, instructing the local government to surrender firearms, loose firearms in the area. So this is now the the. Uh, then another issue is on the issue of uh, this corruption. Corruption can be uh, initially addressed, uh, although that is uh, the, 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 that that will be cons very consistent, uh, persistent uh, move. But initially, uh, we have this uh, mechanism of double auditing, mm -hmm. meaning uh, uh, we there there is an audit in the regional level in the BARM. Uh, office uh, before we were we were uh, in our agreement the commission on audit audit but uh, it was reduced to office for audit so there will be two level of auditing there will be auditing from the regional uh, the bar and then without prejudice also for the national uh, audit to conduct their own audit Sir, will you work with these families? How will you work with these clans, the Tans, the, the Ambatuans, the Magundadatus of Mindanao? There is this uh, now being a ministerial form of government. It, it is basically uh, going away from individual politicians, individual politics to party politics. So, uh, under the ministerial form, the strongest party will prevail because uh, the, the, the appointment of the executive uh, depends, the formation of the government depends on who will gain more seat in the uh, parliament. So uh, this is one, one, pos uh, one uh, uh, possible means in order to reduce this uh, uh, individual politic, uh, po politics uh, prevailing in the, in the region. So these families also, we know, have strong ties to the national government. Yes. Um, and they could try to influence things using yeah. those connections. So mm. uh, how will you deal with that, uh, those ties? Well, you know, uh, the, the, there is always a, uh, a mechanism, uh, we call it uh, IRG. Interrelation, uh, uh, interrelation, uh, uh, interrelation, intergovernmental relation. So, this intergovernmental relation, whatever problem arises between the national and the local, then uh, it will be addressed by forming an inter, uh, IRG to address this. Now. Uh, on the issue of this, uh, there, there being uh, this uh, families, uh, this uh, uh, issue of uh, dynasty, 
you know, uh, we have to admit that all over the country, dynasty is prevailing, political dynasty is prevailing. Uh, during the time of the BOL, uh, uh, Senator Drillon was pushing for a anti-dynasty law uh, in the BOL. So we appealed to him. We said, uh, while we support your 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 intention for the bill, but we cannot adapt it first in the BOL. Uh, what, what we see is, because once we adapt it in the BOL, all the, all the uh, political dynasties in Mindanao will, will go against the uh, uh, BOL. So we, we suggested to him that uh, for us, we will be supportive of that, but it has to be passed in the National Congress first. And then the uh, regional government will follow uh, as long as this is passed in the National Congress. In your first year uh, as, as the Chief Minister of the Interim Government, do you plan to impose taxes? Because the social really had the plans and other powerful groups mm -hmm. with businesses, so do you plan to impose taxes? Uh, impose uh, what? Taxes. Taxes? Uh, yes, uh, of course we will have because the, it, it, it's just needed, but uh, Maybe there are some, it depends on the parliament on how we manage this. Uh, because but personally, do you think we should impose taxes? You should impose taxes in 2019, the first year of the BDA? Uh, maybe uh, after 2019, after the first year. Um, but uh, the, the, the issue also on our side is now is the black grant will be appropriated only in 2020. Because the 2019 will be uh, just using the remaining budget of the ARMM. Mm. But you won't be, so you're, you're not planning to depend wholly on the block grant in 2020. You also want to impose taxes apart from the block grant. Uh, yes, uh, also, but uh, I think we cannot also uh, be very, uh, mean, meaning we have to, uh, to be, uh, we, we cannot impose uh, very high taxes uh, also. Because that will create problem also in the among the, uh, the especially the business sector. But then, uh, what we are looking forward is, uh, for now we need we need to influence the international community to support us, continue their support to Mindanao, to the area during the especially during the first year of the operation of the bta so uh, last time we called up uh, we requested the uh, un uh, country representative to call up a forum for the donors community in order to present to them our priorities in the first year of our operation and we we uh, try to uh, influence them to support us in all our priorities. So the last question has to do with Malawi rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. um, we know that Malawi continues to be a thorny issue, um, and people are saying it's been slow progress. Uh, mm. Some residents of Malawi who are currently out of their homes want to go back um, mm -hmm. as fast as possible. So, sir, how will BPA deal with Malawi rehabilitation given that right now it's under the national government? Mm -hmm. Do you plan to, how, how involved do you plan to get in, in the rehabilitation? You know, we found out that the uh, people in Marawi, especially the evacuees, are very frustrated uh, with their situation. They are still in the evacuation centers and uh, there has been no movement in the rehabilitation. Uh, so now uh, we, we see that uh, uh, there is an urgency in in really addressing the rehabilitation of uh, and rebuilding of uh, Marawi. So maybe we will be, uh, although we are not uh, involved in the in the task force uh, Bangun Marawi, but then maybe we can try to negotiate with the talk with the national government, especially the president that uh, we will uh, we will run because people also in Marawi 
are expecting that uh, the BOL will be will become uh, will be active in, uh, in this rehabilitation uh, program for sir, them. Sir, when you talk to the president, what will you ask for? I think uh, maybe uh, at the least is the, our participation in the rehabilitation and also the immediate, uh, the, the immediate uh, implementation of the rehabilitation program. What's the minimum level of participation you would want? Uh, well, maybe in the, uh, in, initially what we are thinking is because we, we found out that uh, the people in the area were not involved in the planning. And uh, actually, we see that uh, many of the people are not, uh, are not agreeable with the, the plan of the uh, task force. Uh, because one, one example is basically the task force uh, is trying to see that uh, they will convert Marawi into a tourist destination meaning it would be a modern and uh, facilities uh, some, some. well it is that is good also but then the people see that Marawi is the cultural capital of Mindanao so they want to preserve the Moro culture in the, in the area so uh, we have to dialogue on this and uh, see how we can uh, how we can uh, make it uh, sure that the desire of the people and uh, the 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 plan of the uh, task force will uh, will really uh, be synchronized. Mm. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Your yeah. And, yes. Uh, good luck with the, Thank you. the upcoming results. are still being tabulated. So yeah. we okay. wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Yeah. Again, this is Pira Nada and you've been watching Rappler Talk. Thank you for joining us.